Good morning, folks. This is Jacob Holger, artist sculptor, and today we're going to make this mushroom fairy house forest mood lamp. <laughs> and uh, actually, the uh, light is a uh, battery powered light that changes colors, so it's really a lot of fun. And the tutorial will cover all the details uh, to make this piece in. Well, we're using air dry self hardening clay, but you could also do it in polymer clay if you like. And uh, yeah, so uh, and it covers the finish and everything, and actually shows how to do different finishes because I was experimenting uh, with the finishes on the video, and uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun. It's a fun piece, and I hope you will come along and make one with me. Uh, please uh, give the video a like, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell icon so you get a notification when I upload. And let's get started. Okay, I've got this little light here. Changes colors. Doesn't show up really well in here, I don't think, with the video on, but I've got this inspiration. And earlier this week, I made this little magical mushroom fairy house with a, a mushroom forest around it. And I am feeling like oh, I gotta do something with this. Now, I will tell you this. Well, you know what I'm gonna make because obviously I've already told you, but right at this moment, I don't really know what I'm gonna make. I have something in mind, but I'm going to just wing it, and this is how I create, okay? So I'm working in marble clay. I'm rolling a ball because it's hard to do it on screen, so you have to bear with me for a minute. Okay, there it is. Uh, this is uh, marble, and uh, it's self-hardening clay or air dry clay. It's also air dry clay. And uh, <clears throat> it's uh, it's really good clay. It's very easy to work with, I would say. As you can see, it's very pliable. I'm going to press it flat, kind of form it. So it's flat on the bottom. Well, I have this idea in mind, you know, um, but I have not made this before. I have these lights, so I'm like, these lights are really cool, so what can I do, you know? I was thinking maybe I could press it in here a little bit, make a little mark for it. Now, the thing you have to keep in mind about uh, air dry clay, or most clays, especially, uh, or definitely, definitely, uh, marble is it does shrink when it dries. Uh, so, you wouldn't want to sculpt it on a rock, you know, like I do sometimes with polymer clay. Okay, so we got this little place for the candle, uh, the light to fit. Now what I'm thinking is I'm going to make a, uh, something to go over the light, you know? So, I mean, if I roll the ball, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pinch it, pinch it out to be a, a little hollow mound that the light can sit in. Maybe like that. Something like that. You know, so the lights aren't obvious. It's not obvious it's sitting there. And then 
Well, let's see. How can we do this? Well, I think actually maybe I should press this in here. Maybe it's a little bit too complicated to have this thing, you know? And I like to sit in there. And just press it in to have a sandwich. That and then take it out. I mean, this could even be a hole going to, actually. You see, this is how it's done, you guys. I mean, really. You know, when you're designing something, you know, you gotta um, be creative and come up with ideas and figure things out. And I have so many different elements in my shop that I can work with in my studio, just tons of things I picked up along the way. It's not really big enough, I need to make it bigger. Okay, I think that might be big enough. Let's see if I'll fit in there now. Yeah, it fits in there. Okay, I think I need to slim this down. So really, what happens is the light, the light bulb kind of peeks out from the mound. Okay. That one goes in there, and it sticks out a little bit. Uh, illuminates everything, right? Oh yeah, I think we got something going here. This is on, it's on there like that. Okay, yeah. We got something going now. be fun, man. We'll have a porch around it. Yeah. That's going to be good. Okay. Okay, so I'm trying to smooth this out and uh, just thought about it for a little while. I've got the light here. And I think I'm just going to put mushrooms around it. And each mushroom is going to be a fairy house. So I rolled this shape and then I took a ball clay and I started uh, squeezing it like that and rotating it to make the mushroom cap. I'll do another one so you can see. But yeah, I was trying to. And uh, so that, that'll go together like that. So what um, I'm going to do is score this. For this, where the two are going to join, this is going to join here, so it's going to be like that, and then I'm going to take some water, wet that, wet that, and wet this, and wet this. And I'm going to take these two parts and squeezing, uh, you know, applying pressure and twisting at the same time. I'm going to connect them. So it looks like that. 
you see? And then I'm going to uh, put it on the mound <clears throat> and gently twisting, I'll put it, in, put it into place on the mound. And then keeping in mind that mushrooms are kind of, you know, sinuous, that sort of thing. You want to be like they're moving, you know, a little bit. I like that. And you can see if it's standing up, so you want to make sure it's standing up straight. And, uh, and then make another one. So we'll just make a bunch of mushrooms. So I, you know, roll a shape like this. Flatten it on the bottom. Flatten it on the top. Go around here like this. And then I take a ball of clay. Because if you start off with something that's relatively smooth and then you just <coughs> rotate in your hand and you pinch. And uh, it just, that, that keeps everything pretty uniform. And then when it starts to really widen, then you can kind of squeeze it so it's fairly flat on the edges. It looks kind of like that. And then you score the top of the stock, the bottom of the stock, where it's going to go. Bottom of the mushroom cap. And oops, and you wet it, wet it. Wet it, wet it. And twist these together. Applying pressure. It's a little a little too tall and then make it a little bit shorter and cut it off. And then store it. Wet it. And put it on. So that looks pretty cool, huh? And that comes right out. The light is actually a submersible lamp. Halogen? No, not halogen. Is it halogen? Uh, what do they call that? I, I can't remember the name of it. But I'll, I'll put some places where you can find them in the uh, video description with the tool supply list. <clears throat> so I'm just trying to, you know, shape them a little bit. And, uh, and I'm actually going to make them fairy houses, so I, you know, I can start doing that, too. Um, so, like this one, I'll put uh, a little doorway in there. Mm, you can see that with the light. You might not be able to see it with, with the light. Mm. Yeah, a little hole in the into the mushroom here for the window. You can actually use a ball tool. Probably with more accuracy than the other tool. I think the one problem we're going to have with this is painting it. You know? I think this, this tool makes a better door, door tool. 
painting it and smoothing it is going to be a problem, I bet. One thing about this clay, this Marbox, is you want to keep it wet. All the clay you're working with and everything, you spray it every once in a while with a mister or wet it with a brush. <coughs> okay, let's make another mushroom. So I'm just going to keep going here and I'll come back in a few. Okay, you can see where I'm at now. I'm kind of coming, I'm making, I made this last uh, one smaller. I have these, they're all kind of coming down smaller now. And getting ready to put another one on. Now, scoring and wetting, wetting and scoring, I'm telling you, that's really important stuff with this, with air dry clay and, uh, you know, I mean, it's a must. You really got to be doing it. So make sure you do that. Make your sculptures to last. People, your family, your children, your grandbabies, they're going to want to have this stuff, you know? They are, for sure. Go uh, going to that, you know, sinuous thing. Even though they are kind of bigger mushrooms, doesn't mean you can't make them sinuous. <laughs> You know? Uh, so got that artistic form going on. It's a really cool piece. I love this. I think it's so exciting. And you see it happen. I mean, this is how I create. I don't know how you, you know, what you guys think, how it, how it all comes together. But this is how it happens, just like this. And I don't usually, you know, I don't usually share that because, I mean, I just never thought to. But, yeah. Okay, that's cool. And then a couple windows. Provide a little support in the back while you're pushing in. I think that actually is probably enough, really. Maybe uh, I'll trim this off a little bit here. Think about it some more. See if I can come up with any other ideas. I, you know, I definitely would like to embellish them a little bit with some, maybe a um, little mushrooms in here, maybe little baby mushroom pairing houses in the, in here, maybe. Let me think on that, and I'll come back in a little bit. Okay, I'm show you what I'm doing here. I'm putting mushroom, uh, baby mushrooms in here. I just made this mushroom. And I've already scored, and I'm still wet. These could be joined. And I did go in and do some smoothing, because I know that's going to be a problem later on. Same thing with these. There's a big little fairy house at two. Window. 
plays really well too. There's not one to stop very easily right now. Mm. Ooh. Stuck in there. But yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool. And uh, I think that'll probably be it. And I think uh, I think I'll make a little pathway. And that's where the whole thing came from in the first place was the pathway. I built the do I'm going to make it a little bit longer. There we go. I'm not sure if that's going to work. Maybe I won't do that. Let me see. No, I'm not going to do that. I think, uh, I think what I'll do is, you know, you don't want your brush really soaking wet. You just want it moist. You know, when you're smoothing because, uh, you don't really get the drag on the clay without doing that, you know, without taking off a lot of the water when you really apply the brush to the sculpture. <sighs> you can kind of flare the, um, Mushroom caps a little bit, but yeah, that's that's nice. It's symmetrical, aesthetically pleasing, eh? And it's very unusual, cool little thing. And probably what I'll do is uh, texture all this. Um, you know, in fact, that would be a good idea because I think smoothing all this is going to be really hard and it might be just better to, I mean, smooth it, you know, you want to smooth for uh, structural integrity, for sure. Smoothing is good for that. Especially, you know, with the self-hardening of air dry clay because it's, um, you know, it's a water-based clay, so, obviously. Um, it's kind of like glue, you know, if you do that, it's smoothing. Um, but yeah, this is a fun piece, really fun piece. And I'm really glad that I sat down tonight and gave it a go. So yeah, I'm going to spend some time smoothing now, really smoothing, 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 lots of smoothing. And then we'll come back after a little bit. Okay, so I'm, uh, what I did was I did a lot of smoothing. And then I uh, went in with a ball tool and uh, did a lot of texture on everything, uh, even the mushroom caps. So what I did there, I just ran the tool around in circles. Uh, because, you know, this is going to be really difficult to get really pristinely smooth. And the finish will actually look really good on all the texture. So I'm pretty pleased with the piece. Uh, the one thing I want to make sure, of course, is that the light is definitely going to fit. That it, the hole is in the center is big enough. So I want to make sure of that. Um, so you want to double check that. Um, and then when you get everything ready and you're happy with it, and it's done, done, done. You can take uh, this type of clay, Marblex. I don't know about other brands, uh, but this clay, you can put in the oven on a warm setting for about a half hour to dry the surface so we can do a finish, and that's what I'm going to do after I get everything worked out the way I want with the texture and smoothing and everything. So uh, we'll do that and come back. I'm really excited about this. I think it's going to be a fun piece, and I'm looking forward to seeing it finished. Okay, we're back and the next step is to paint the sculpture black. That's going to be the base coat for the finish we'll be doing today. I'm using Utrecht Studio Series Acrylic in Deep Black. Um, but you can probably use just about any kind of paint for this project. 
Um, a flat black or matte black would be best. Um, and the uh, this paint is uh, a matte black. And uh, what I do is I get my brush a little bit wet, put it into the paint, and then just uh, paint it on. Uh, this piece has a lot of detail and hard to reach areas. You have to take your time and, uh, uh, you know, work it into all the details and uh, look at it from every direction possible while you're painting so that you can cover every last bit of the clay with the black. And, uh, and when you've done that, we'll come back and again, let's see, you want to do two coats of this. On there okay okay we're back and now we're gonna start the next part of the finish we're gonna be using Johnson's paste wax it's available in most hardware stores it's really an outstanding wax and I've been using it for many years and I highly recommend it uh, we're also gonna be using Pearl X pigments and I'm pretty sure what I'm gonna do is a mixture of different colors uh, but I'm gonna use the reflex violet antique bronze and possibly silver I'm not sure yet but let's see how it goes uh, and I, I had done this finish a long time ago and I just thought of it now and I just thought it would be really pretty for this piece so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of wax on my brush like that and then what I do is I dab that off on the table I go right into the, uh, right into it, you know, it doesn't muck it up. I've been doing it for years like that. And then I dab that on the table to get the excess off. And then I just apply it. A little more wax, dab it on the table, pick up a little purple. And, uh, I call it purple, but it's reflex violet. Purple, I'll call it purple. But you know, right? So, uh, yeah. I just go over the whole sculpture. And I'm also going to do the stocks in the purple as well. So I'm going to do that. All the all the mushrooms can come back. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some more rest of my brush, dab it off the table, and I'm going to pick up some antique bronze, and uh, I'm going to dab that on the table, and I'm going to do the base and bronze, but I'm also going to just lightly go over the uh, mushrooms. And just kind of highlight the, the purple on them, which will be really pretty. Maybe a little heavier. Yeah, but so I'll do that and come back. Okay, now <clears throat> I'm going to take a uh, soft cloth and just uh, rub it. Keeping in mind that this is uh, paste wax and it takes on a really nice sheen, but it also brings out uh, the bronze and the other the reflex violet. And makes it really kind of pop and quite beautiful. Very pretty. And, uh, yeah. This is, a, this is a kind of nice finish. I haven't done it for a while where I uh, did it in the uh, reflex bottle first and then, you know, 
highlighted with bronze, so that was kind of fun. I did that a long time ago, I think in, in 2014 on a dark I made. I called it uh, Gun Nail Bronze. That's what I called the finish. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a nice finish. I don't know why I called it Gun Nail, but yeah, it, it, did, it kind of looked like Gun Nail, you know? Uh, but yeah, it's uh, really pretty, really pretty. So you know, I was uh, starting off in the beginning, I was just designing this piece and kind of working on ideas and stuff. And I'm, I'm doing that still, I'm thinking, you know, what would make this really pop a lot? So I'm getting a, got a little bit of black here. And uh, I'm gonna kind of go over the mushrooms a little bit here. Especially along the, uh, along the edges here. Into the mushroom caps, and uh, yeah, this is this is how you know I come up with ideas. I actually try things, and you know I say, oh, I wonder how that would look. You know, and having done so many, uh, you know, unique and beautiful finishes on my pieces over the years, I, I get ideas, and I I just try them. You know, and that's I think that's what in a way may set me apart from other people is that uh, maybe not other artists other artists are doing the same thing believe me they are but um it would be really good if you uh, were able to pick up some of that um and just start trying to come up with ideas and just think about it and, you know what can i do what can i come up with You know, maybe use this kind of as a stepping off point uh, for um, you becoming an, an artist and, and actually creating your own uh, creations, coming up with your own ideas and that sort of thing. Good stuff, really good stuff. So I'm going to do this for a few more minutes and I'll be back. So I, I did a lot of black all around. And um, so now I'm going to get a little bit of wax on my brush and get some antique uh, bronze and see that, that makes that black, makes the, uh, the bronze stand out more. Experimentation is good. It's a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing, guys. Lightly, but concentrating on those mushroom edges, really. And the doorways, the windows, the mountain windows. Yeah, that helps. And further experimentation, I'm using. Uh, golden GAC 100. I got a little bit of the lid right here. Got some on my brush. And pick up some antique bronze. And just go around and highlight the doors, the edges of the mushrooms, the edges of the windows. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I've ever done this before, but I just thought of it. Because I really want that to be... Uh, it's. I think it's a gorgeous piece. It's very dark, of course, but, you know, it's a <laughs> mushroom forest. I mean, mushroom forests are dark. So, yeah, it's really actually quite pretty, I think. I don't know what you think, but maybe you could just leave me a comment and just tell me what you think of this, huh? What do you think? <laughs>
Okay. So this is what the finished piece looks like. I mean, it's um, quite beautiful, I think. And uh, we can add the lamp. I think uh, I like the blue the best. That's a pretty, pretty. Now, I, I'm, from what I understand, these, uh, these little lamps burn a long time. They go for a long time. So, pretty cool. Yeah, it worked out, worked out really nice. And uh, I really like uh, how, we, how the GHC 100 applying the bonds that way was... Really, uh, really, uh, nice, 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 nice. Well, yeah, I, I encourage you to, you know, see if you can brainstorm and come up with ideas. And not just come up with ideas, but actually sit down and try to, uh, create something from it. Let's do some close-ups of this. So later, after I experiment, experimented uh, during the taping of this tutorial uh, with the finishes, I got this brainstorm to take the uh, golden GAC 100 and uh, paint the entire sculpture with this uh, Pearl X Pigments Misty Lavender. And then when that dried, I highlighted the edges of the mushrooms and the doorways and windows and, and actually dusted it a little bit with the with that bronze, the antique bronze. And wow, it looks so great. It's a much lighter um, finish and it's quite beautiful. And, and actually, um, I decided to uh, use that as my thumbnail. Um, so... There you go. I mean, what I would recommend is just trying, you know, experimenting. Um, I encourage you to experiment. And, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to be doing a lot more with the uh, GAC 100. It's an acrylic product that, um, uh, you know, is good. It, it dries clear. I've been using it for years. It, it, it goes a long ways. It might be... I'm not really sure how much it costs, but it does go a long ways. I mean, I, I, I literally, a bottle will last me a few years, uh, even using it frequently. So I'll probably be doing more finishes with it, I'm sure, in the future. Uh, this is just wonderful stuff. And, uh, yeah, so um, try your experiment and uh, 
see what you can come up with. I, you know, one thing I would like to try is uh, I have the, this other color uh, called Duo Red Blue. <clears throat> uh, it's a very interesting color because it looks like it's pink, but it goes on blue with a kind of pink in it, and when the light hits it, it changes colors and can actually be all kinds of different colors, purple and all kinds of different colors. So I, I'm, I'm excited to try that later with this piece. So, uh, yeah, and uh, if you decide to make one of these pieces, uh, you know, if you could send me a photo, I'd love to see it. Uh, my email address is in the about section of um, on my channel page uh, at Jake Poulter. And so, and you also can message me on Facebook. My, there's a link for my Facebook page um, in the video description, along with a complete tool and supply list. Uh, everything that we did and used and everything will be in there, in that tool and supply list. And so, um, if you could, please give the video a like, share it with your friends and family and on any social media you might be on. Um, leave me a comment. Tell me what you think of this video. Do you like this kind of content? Um, do you find it useful? Would you like to try to do it? Uh, do you have any questions? Let me know. I will reply to your comments and questions. And uh, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell icon so you get notified when I upload. And I hope to see you guys again soon. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.